Pretty palacious. <laughs> Almost took me three minutes to walk over here. Whew, out of breath. This is our, this is our community here. It belongs to our little subdivision. But it's nice to come sit out here. Okay, I think I'm going to flip the camera over. Maybe I need to turn around. But I wanted to read the Bible to you, but the wind's blowing. But I do want to tell you something. Um, I do want to tell you that Jesus is coming soon, and He's coming to get us. Those who believe and trust in Him. haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he made it really easy. He made it really easy. So there's no excuse why people end up in hell or people aren't caught up in the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church, nobody knows the day or the hour, but God gave us signs to look out for and are the signs happening now right now 2022 they're happening faster than ever and um, are we living in the days of Noah are we living in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah you better believe it are they pushing and stuffing that unnatural affection unnatural affection in people's faces see you can either accept God or you don't have to accept God I had somebody comment on my um, my Facebook um, post about the sickening things that they're teaching children in schools and she shared it on her page and she typed out this long, drawn-out, sickening story that she's tired of Christians shoving religion, shoving God, shoving everything in her face. And that's not what we do. We warn people and tell people that there really is a hell. And the way you're living 
there will be a payment to be paid for it if you don't change. That's all we say. And all we say is just to accept Jesus in your heart and get him in your heart. And once you do that and accept him and have him be Lord of your life, then he starts directing you. And you don't want to break his heart anymore um, living in unnatural lifestyles. And I'm not going to flag any words, but when I say unnatural, do you know what I mean? It's all over TV commercials, movies. They have their own channel. It's They're teaching it to our little innocent children's minds. And it's demonic. And all you have to do is, is accept Christ and He'll direct you. You'll be a little Christian, but then you'll keep growing and growing and growing. And when you do something wrong, you'll feel it here. And you don't want to break His heart, our Savior's heart, anymore. And, um... I know there's a lot of people kind of weary and tired and because we know that this world's not going to get any better. This world's going to get worse. And each day it's going to get worse and worse until it comes to a head and the rapture of the church happens and people, millions of people disappear. And then you're going to be stuck here with demonic activity. See, the restrainer will be removed. The Holy Spirit will be removed. The people that have Jesus in their heart, they're not good people, but they, they're they not murderers. And, you know, when you have God directing you, you stop living ugly and sinful. So... Those people are going to be removed because they accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And once you do that, he's your, he's your director. And you get in the Bible and the Bible will talk to you. And because that's, that's why they called it a, li a living word, living word, the living word of scripture. So, if you're living in a lifestyle that you know deep down that it's not right, then it probably isn't. There's still a small little voice inside you that says, mm, you shouldn't be doing that. And for people that are in Christ already, they know because the Holy Spirit that indwells in them tells them that is not good. So they don't do it. They stop doing it. But make no doubt, you're still a sinner. You're still unrighteous. You're still like filthy rags. None of us are righteous. Not one. We're all sinners. And we all need Jesus to save us from hell. Because hell is a very, very real place. And you will go there if you do not accept Jesus who paid for your sins on the cross. He paid for your sins so you wouldn't go to hell. That's all you got to do is just say, Jesus, come in my life. I need you. I want you. And once you do that, you're going to change. start changing it little by little, but you will. And... You'll see a change. Other people will see a change too. So. But you ain't got much time left. You know. I, I can't. I feel like the rapture will happen this year. But I don't know. It, we could go into 2023. But the, the world is rapidly changing. At breakneck speed. So I don't see us here much longer. The restrainer. The church. We are the church. When they say the church will be removed, we, the church, we are the church, will be removed. 
and the restrainer, which is the Holy Spirit, will be removed from this earth. So the only thing that's going to be left here is wickedness, ugliness, demonic activity, just order, uh, chaos, no order, just chaos and craziness and starvation and wars and famine and pestilences. Who would want to stay here for that? You wouldn't. I, I My dad died, and I know he was saved. And my mom, um, she was a Catholic. And they pray to the to the Mary, and they they think that you go through the priest uh, to get to Jesus, and that's a lie from the pit of hell. You don't. There's only one way to heaven, and it's Jesus Christ. And believe it or not, I was raised in a Catholic school, but guess what? My dad, my God had a plan, and God had my dad read me the Holy King James Bible. And when I would go to Catholic school, I was never really paying attention. I was never really into it. And uh, my last, because uh, we, we moved from Louisiana to Texas, and, and um, I ended up uh, in third grade in public school. And um, so I, I did kindergarten, first grade, and second grade in a Catholic school. But I never, they would make us go to mass and all this. And I was never into it. And somehow God blocked, put a blinder on me. Because I didn't like that religion from a little child. But um, uh, I've been in Texas. I was born in Texas, but my mother moved away after she divorced my dad. And uh, we lived in uh, Lafayette, Louisiana, and we stayed there for a few years and came back to Texas. And I've been here ever since, but I'm native Texan. This is my home. This is my home state. Um, but we can't put our hope and our faith in a government that's never going to come back. America is never coming back. They stole the election. The election was stolen. It's... It can happen again. Some of the worst can happen. I mean, nobody's running our country. Somebody that we don't know. I think it's Obozo, but who knows. But our country's never coming back. This this country is gone. Gone, gone. <laughs> America is never coming back. But you know what? Jesus is. That's the good news. The good news is Jesus is coming back. He's coming back for his church. We are the church. And he's coming back because he hasn't appointed his his people. We're his people. We're all his people. But if you reject him, then you can't be his people. <laughs> because you're rejecting the free gift of salvation. The free gift of eternity to live with him. You're rejecting that when you reject Christ. There's only one way to heaven one way no other way it's only through Jesus Christ there's only one way to heaven it's through Jesus Christ but um, look look at my view here you know I'm gonna tell you something God sent me here to Palacios you know why I know that? It's because when I pulled up to look at this piece of property last year in August, there was a huge cross in the front. There was a peach tree, my favorite. There was a fig tree, my favorite. There was a beautiful tree by the front porch. There was a garden that I wanted. And I knew God put me here. And immediately I knew and I wanted this house. It's a, It was a little rundown house. It's nothing fancy or my husband's still working on it. But it ain't nothing fancy. But you know what? It's just a temporary shell until we go home. Eternity. To be with God. Jesus. 
They're one. And he doesn't want anybody to go to hell. He doesn't want anybody. That's why he's waiting so long for the rapture. Because he's waiting for that very last person to get saved. So he can take us up. But when that one, one, one last person accepts Christ and gets saved, he's coming. He's coming. I watched this movie I rented on Prime called um, Before the Wrath. If you haven't seen it, you need to watch. I paid $3.99 on Prime to watch it. And it is good. It explains the Galilean wedding and how Jesus was uh, explaining to his disciples about, you know, the, the wine and the bread and the, and the, um, that he's coming back. I won't drink this cup of wine until I drink it with you in my father's house. And yeah, it explains in layman's term. And I need everything layman's term because I'm not all, <laughs> I'm not all, ever since I got COVID, I have major memory loss. I have major weakness and fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome. And everything I do, I'm out of breath. I'm just sitting here and I'm out of breath. But guess what? God's going to give me a new body. I can't wait to meet all the people that are watchmen that I follow. J.D. Farag, Pastor um, Jeffrey Greider, uh, Hourly Watch, Generation 234. I can't remember the four digits. See? Ah! Uh, who else? Who else? Barry Scarborough, J.D. Farag, um, Watchman on the Wall, 88. Can't forget him. Forever Blessed Ministries. If you haven't seen Forever Blessed Ministries on YouTube, go check them out. They have a really... Boy, he's a street preacher. He's a young kid. And he's street preaching his little heart out. God will be giving him some... We get crowns, <laughs> but guess what? We're going to put them all on his feet because it's not about us. It's about him. It's not about us. He did everything. We're just lucky to be there. I'll be happy with a little five by five with a bed. <laughs> as long as I'm not here or down there. <laughs> I'll be happy with anything. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'll be happy with anything. They always have a pretty sunset here. I always tell God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for putting me here. Thank you for putting me here until he comes to get us. He put us here for a reason because we sold our house and we hauled butt. Sold our house and just got the heck out of Dodge. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that sunset. Do you see that sunset? It's pretty. Whew. It has been a hot day. There's a lot of good crab in here. If you haven't crabbed. Excuse me. Well, let me see if I can open up the scripture. Without the pages flying all over. Oh, let's see what it let's see what the wind blows. Let's see what the wind blows on. Let's see. Deuteronomy. Kings. Chronicles. Chronicles. Job. Job. Ha ha. Oh, here's one. It turned to Job 32. Job chapter 32. And it says here, great, great men, great men are not always wise. Neither do the age understand judgment. <laughs> Psalms, Psalm 62. My soul, wait thou upon, wait only upon God. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Hallelujah. 
I always got to give y'all some revelation here. Let's revelation. <laughs> Let's do there's going to be a lot of that revelation stuff going on when uh, we get where the rapture church happens. You're going to see Reve Book of Revelation uh, come to life. We're not there yet, but when it does. Okay, Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from... The hour of temptation which shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. That's about the rapture promise. That's a rapture promise right there. For mid-tribbers and post-tribbers. Post-tribbers, we call them the U-turn. Uh, the U-turn tribbers. Okay, let's see here. Here goes one. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my vo voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is uh, chapter 4, verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for Thou hast created all things, and for thy patience they are and were created. Chapter 5, verse 12. Saying with a loud, loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb. You better believe he's worthy. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Do you know that the book of Revelation is the only book in the whole Bible that promises you blessings if you study it and read it and get your face in that scripture? You'll be blessed. That's the only book in the Bible that promises you blessings. Well, I guess I'm going to go back home now. I wanted to show you all the pretty uh, pier in the water is some good crabbing out here let me see let me, let me put my water here hold on let me show y'all the water see that water and drop my phone there's some people over there catching okay we're gonna walk to the car I need to go home before it gets dark. And let's see here. Okay, here. Here. All right, y'all. Hang on. Hang on for a ride. Hang on. I don't like when people leave their garbage. Clean after yourself. You're not children's. Let's go see what these people are catching over here. I walk slow because I'm, I'm pretty disabled after I got COVID. My memory is is uh, doesn't function right. I forget a lot. I'm always out of breath. I'm always tired. I'm always just sitting down, just out of breath. But Jesus is coming to give me a new body. The wind is blowing hard. I'm sorry. Hi. How you doing? Good. Hi, I'm fine. How are you? Y'all catching? Oh y'all cat oh y'all trying? <laughs> Crabbing? Okay. Ooh, good luck. <laughs> Ooh, you got, oh, you dropped one right there. A little, yeah. Okay. Ooh, oh, look at you. You got a little, oh, that's all I catch out here. That's all I catch is that. that. And then. And I, I, crabbing's good, but I mean, as far as like any fish you can eat, we, we don't, 
we don't, me and my husband, we don't catch nothing but this. If anybody caught any red out here, I'd like to know who they are. <laughs> Ooh, look at that mess. Okay. Have y'all heard that song? I can only imagine. I think that's my favorite song. And there's another one that I love. It's called um, Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. I love that song too. You know, there was three ducks that crossed the hot road in town today, and I pulled over and I tried, three baby ducks, I mean, not, and I couldn't find them. I was like, where is, where's their mother? Okay. Let me get in my car. Oh, woo. Okay, well, uh, let's put this on. Oh, everybody is. Now, this is when it's pretty. When the sun's going down, that's when it's really pretty. This is nothing but ranchers that live out here in Palacios. A lot of cattle, a lot of cotton, a lot of farming. And I saw a lot of their um, crops, because we haven't had rain, were um, dried out and they lost, a lot of people lost some crops. Um, they weren't able to harvest anything. I, the only thing I saw them harvesting was the cotton. And um, they lost a lot this year we haven't had any rain out here and um, but the climate's gonna the climate changer people which is a bunch of BS uh, the climate changers they're gonna get all the climate change they want after the rapture they're gonna have so much climate change it, they were not gonna know which way to turn they're gonna have all the climate change that they can handle. Just wait. Fishfield Trading Post. It's a little restaurant and store. There's a turquoise house. 